Hey YouTube, it's your girl Desmarie. If you are new to my channel, welcome. And if you would like to join the vibe, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. All right, y'all, I'm back with another video. I'm back. Did y'all miss me? Did y'all miss me or what? So on my Instagram, if you're not following me on Instagram and would like to follow me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram at bro that's Dez. That way you are connected with me every single day. And yeah, so on my Instagram, I actually asked my followers to ask me a few questions for this girl talk video. So make sure y'all getting y'all drinks, getting whatever, getting your popcorn. Let's talk it out. Let's have a girl's talk and let's just get comfortable with each other. And that's just that on that, period. All right. So I have the questions right here that my followers have asked me. So we're gonna get right into this video because the girls wanna talk. So let's get into it, all right? Let's, let's start, let's start real light. Somebody asks, do you prefer tampons or do you prefer pads? So with me personally, I honestly do not wear tampons. The only time I really wear tampons is if like I'm going swimming and I wanna swim. Other than that, I usually wear pads. I don't know, like I just feel like I don't know. People say pads are more unsanitary than tampons, but I honestly believe tampons are more unsanitary because it's like just staying in there, whereas with a pad, you can change it. You know what I'm saying? But honestly, on my period, I usually always wear pads. Only time I wear tampons is, like I said, if I'm going swimming. Was, have you ever been on birth control and what was your experience? Honestly and truly, I'm actually on birth control right now. And I'm taking the pills. I think I'm on Spirinolact. No. I'm on, I don't know what the brand is called, but it's the pills that you take every single day. The only reason I'm on this birth control is because I'm currently on Accutane. If I was not on Accutane, cause you know, with Accutane, you're required to be on birth control. But if I wasn't on Accutane, I would not be on birth control. Um, but before this birth control, I actually did have the thing in my arm. It was um, called Nexplanon. I had the implant in my arm and I was on um, Nexplanon for about a year. My experience with Nexplanon, it just, I don't know, I really didn't like it. It, um, what was my symptoms? I just remember I was on it like after, I don't know if I was on it after I graduated or my senior year, but I wasn't feeling it too much. First off, I, I remember I was constantly bleeding, I believe. I gained hella weight, like I was, I got really, really thick on Accutane, I mean, not on Accutane, on, uh, on Nexplanon. Like, I gained about 30 pounds. I never weighed 160, and I weighed 160 on uh, Nexplanon. I think those were my two main symptoms that made me get off of it. But after I got off of that birth control, like, I lost all my weight back. Like, I went back down to 130, and that's where I'm at right now, so... Um, next for none, I don't know, I honestly didn't have a good experience with it other, other than the weight gain. But I kind of didn't like the weight gain because I was gaining weight in my face and I did not like that. Um, but the birth control I'm on now, pills, it doesn't have as many hormones as the other birth controls do. So you don't gain as much weight. With me personally on the pills, I don't gain any weight you doing the birth control pills. Um, so yeah. The birth control pills to me, honestly, if you like, I don't really want to experience that many side effects. To me personally, I'm not having any side effects with um, the birth control I'm on now. And the birth control I'm on now also does help with acne and stuff. Like it controls your acne. Talking to a friend ex. Would I talk to a friend ex? Baby, no, I don't talk to friends ex. I just feel like if you my friend, any dude or anybody that you dealt with, that's your dude still at the end of the day. Like, I'm not finna, I'm not finna experience that. Like, I just feel like, no. And I wouldn't want no friends of mine to talk to any of my exes. Like, I just feel like, why? Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, I don't deal, I don't do that. Um, how to deal with your nigga if his friends are hoes? Baby! Okay, so if you got a partner and they go out but you know that your partner friends is hoes and they always cheating on their significant other and it's just like damn like you don't even feel safe for your partner to go hang out with them because they some hoes like you're gonna have to just talk to your partner and first off you're gonna have to trust your partner and second off you're gonna have to have a conversation with your partner and let them know how you feel about that because i feel like birds of a feather flock together like if 
if they i don't know if i said that right but to me honestly i feel like you are the company that you keep. Like, if you hang around hoes and somebody that's constantly cheating and you going on in that environment, like, why would you want to put yourself around people that's doing stuff that you don't even do? Like, I feel like that's only going to encourage you to do it. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. You got to have a strong partner, you know what I'm saying, that ain't easily influenced, that they ain't easily pressured into doing stuff just because their friend is doing it. And I don't know, I just, I don't know. Cause to me personally, I've been in a situation where I ain't feel comfortable if my partner went out. Cause I knew, you know what I'm saying? The people they was going out with was friendly than the hope. And I ain't want my person to be around that energy. But that's a conversation that you gotta have with your partner and trust your partner and, you know what I'm saying? Let your partner know like, hey, I'm uncomfortable with this. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of niggas, like they'll say, I don't want you, they'll be quick to let you know that they don't want you hanging out with so-and-so because they feel like they some hoes. But then they can go hang out with them and them some hoes too. And it's just like, bro, I don't understand the double standards. I don't get it. The, I just would not feel comfortable if my partner went out with people that are hoes or that disrespect their girls because it's like, why do you want to be around that? You know what I'm saying? Like. I honestly just don't like that. And if I had a problem, I'm gonna let my partner know, like, hey, I don't feel that you're doing this. Like, I don't feel like... But that's just me. I don't know, everybody different. You just gotta really do trust your partner. And if your partner lets you know, like, hey, just because they're doing this, I ain't gonna be on that, trust your partner. And then wait till they show you different. If they show you different, bye. Period. Period. How do you stay on point with your hygiene? How do I stay on point with my hygiene? Okay, so with hygiene, honestly and truly, I don't really use a lot of feminine products. Like, as far as down there, I don't use nothing. I really don't. I take a shower my, twice a day. I'll take a shower twice a day. Anytime, like after work, I always take a shower. Like if you smell any type of aroma, take a shower. And when you take a shower, it's about how you're taking a shower because a lot of times if you're going in the shower and you're doing a quick and then you out, it's just like, what's the point of you taking a shower? You need to be wiping every area of your body, especially in the areas that you know smells faster. And as far as soap, everybody knows don't put soap down there. I usually don't ever put nothing down there. I always just use water and I have no problems with my hygiene. Like, I don't really use too many products. What I bathe with, I always bathe with Dove, any scent with Dove. I'm really not sensitive at all. So it's not like a specific Dove that I got to shower with, like unscented or sensitive skin. I can really take a shower with any type of Dove, but I prefer cucumber. Um, But yeah, I really don't be using too many products. You always want to just be prepared with anything. So always keep deodorant, perfume, gum, anything that you need in your purse. When you're taking a shower, you have to open your booty and you got to you got to clean your booty like you got to open your vagina lips and you got to clean in there. Like you got to clean yourself thoroughly like you just got to clean yourself. So that's just how I personally take care of my hygiene. Sex toys. Do you use sex toys? Honestly, to y'all, I ain't gonna lie. I've never used a sex toy up until like two, three weeks ago. I used that rose toy for the first time. And y'all, the first time I used the rose toy, I ain't, I didn't understand it. I was like, but this is over hyped. I don't get it. But then I had to use it one more time. I, re I let it redeem itself. I used it this for the second time. And it showed me what it need. It showed me what it needed to show me. And I was I was I was a little content with it, you know what I'm saying? But have I used it again now? Nah, Cause I'm not really into six toys. I'd rather just I'd rather just I don't know. I'd rather just I don't know. <laughs> like with the rose toy, you basically just using it on your stuff and I just feel like head just feel better. Like why do I gotta use a toy? Why can't I just have head or something? Like I don't know. I just feel like actual six or whatever oral six just feels better than a toy. Do you prefer shaving or waxing? I actually do prefer waxing, of course. Um, I just feel like waxing is 10 times better. It's 10 times more beneficial. Your hair don't grow back as fast. Um, some people don't want to do waxing because they feel like the pain is just so intolerable. But uh, let me tell you this. The very first time I went to go get a wax, 
like I would say it was like two years ago. My very first time I went to get a wax. I went to like European wax center. And the lady, she did my wax. And when I tell you I screamed and then she didn't even get to finish. Like she didn't get to finish. She didn't even get to go down to where my butt area is. Like I just was screaming. I could not take it. I was cussing. Like I just couldn't take it. And I left and I was told myself I'm never getting no wax again because I didn't know what to expect when I got my first wax. But after I want to say like weeks later, I was like, bro, this you're gonna have to toughen up and go get another wax. So I did. And when I went to go get my second wax, it didn't feel as bad as my first wax did. And each time that I went after that, it felt it didn't feel as bad each time I went. You know what I'm saying? So the more you go, the less it's gonna hurt. The first time you go, if you never got wax before, it may be painful because you've never had it before. But the more you go, the less it's gonna hurt and you're gonna get over that. Like, you know what I'm saying? And then with shaving, it come with too many hair bumps, like that prickly feel. I just don't like that. Like I want my JJ to feel smooth, like a baby's bottom. Like I just like smooth and it's just better. Like I don't know. It's just it's just better. I really do like waxing uh, better than shaving. But to each his own. Some people don't even like shaving or waxing. If you like hair on your stuff, keep hair on your stuff. Like, you don't gotta do what everybody else doing. You do what you wanna do. But I personally prefer waxing only because of the benefits and it lasts longer. And yeah. How do you know if your partner is the one for you? How do you know if your partner is the one for you if you ain't got a question if they for you? If you ain't got a question, damn, is this person for me, then they for you. Like, if they meet your expectations, if they genuinely make you happy, if 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 you can really be yourself around them, if, you, if, they, if they uplift you, if they just make you better in every aspect of your life, if they push you to do better, like, you know what I'm saying? If they hold you down, you know what I'm saying? Even when the times get rough or you can just tell when somebody's genuinely, genuinely, genuinely for you. You know what I'm saying? And with you. You know what I'm saying? So, I feel like you would definitely know somebody's the one for you if you ain't even got a question. Like, damn, is that for me? Periods and cramps. Do you have cramps on your periods? And let's talk about periods. Before I got on birth control, I used to have my periods every, like, my periods was always fluctuating. Like, I would have my periods every four to six months. I never had my period every month. You know what I'm saying? When I started birth control, it kind of made um, my period cycles come better and regular. So I started to get my period every single month. As far as cramps, I really don't have bad cramps, honestly and truly. I make cramp the day I start. But it ain't too bad to where I can't handle. I might take an Advil, make I might take like two Advils and then I'm done taking Advil because my cramps really only last for like the first day. And I usually have my period, it be heavy for like the first three days. After that, it start getting light like on the fourth day and then I'm off like the fifth or sixth day. So I usually have my period about six days. It really don't, I really don't be having bad cramps like that. It be cool, you know what I'm saying? Um, but there are a lot of things that you can take to deal with your cramps. Heating, heating pads are actually good for your cramps as well. Taking hot showers. Anytime you feel like some really heavy cramps, even going in the shower to turn on some hot water and just letting the water run in your stomach, that's also some good. Um, I really don't know a lot of things that are good for cramps because I don't really take much for cramps. So I just take Advil, like I said. Or if it's that bad, I'll probably go take a hot shower or something. But other than that, um, I really don't be doing all that with the cramps and stuff. What do you do when you feel overwhelmed or unmotivated? So when I feel overwhelmed or unmotivated, I'm like, bro, I need to clear my mind. I'll probably go outside in the car, you know, fire me up a blunt or something. Um, and also, I do have a connection with God. So I pray, very spiritual. So I do pray and I ask God, you know, to release some of the stress that I'm having and to guide me and show me the way and to take some of the stress that's on me, off of me. And I kind of just pray my way through a lot of stuff. Um, and yeah, and sometimes when I'm feeling unmotivated, I kind of go read my boards or go read my calendar or mind myself or what I put on the calendar every time. We ain't on the earth for a long time. So it ain't no reason for you to stay like this forever. Like get up, go find something that you really like to do and do it and pray about it and it's gonna be okay so anytime i'm feeling overwhelmed or 
uh, I'm motivated. I do those things. And also, a lot of times, it's okay to cry. I do cry sometimes to just let go of, you know, feelings that I have. And crying sometimes does make me feel a lot better. So, <sighs> that's that then. How do you remain confident in the things that you do? How do you keep self-confidence? So, with self-confidence, you just gotta, and to be honest, we human. There's gonna be days where we don't feel the best. There's gonna be days where we don't feel like we that bitch. But you gotta not get out of that and just remind yourself that you are that girl and that you just gotta remain confident. And to remain confident, you gotta not compare yourself to nobody else. You can't be watching what somebody else is doing because the more you watch what everybody else is doing, you gonna feel like you ain't doing good enough and then it's gonna make you feel like you ain't that bitch. So don't compare yourself to nobody else because social media is fake where well, everybody put on social media they only put their good days or you know what i'm saying that's that's not real you know what i'm saying so don't compare yourself to the next girl to the next boy because you don't know what they going through or what what that money or pockets really looking like you know what i'm saying so just remain confident in who you are know that you that know that you that girl and um can't nobody tell you nothing like you that girl period like and that's just that i'm at jealous and fake friends all right so if you got some friends in your circle that you feel is jealous to you cut them off if you feel like they fake cut them off don't ignore no red flags cut them off because all it's gonna do is just drain you and it, it, you don't need people like that in your in your life. Like you need friends that support you one hundred percent. Like you don't want no friends that that get jealous or have this attitude of you know what I'm saying. Like you just know friends that really support you. Like you know what I'm saying. You ain't gotta ask a friend to support you. You ain't gotta you ain't gotta beg a friend to support you. You ain't gotta do none of that. A real friend gonna be a real friend at the end of the day, and a real friend gonna be understanding of you. You know what I'm saying. Like. I don't know. I just feel like with friends, a lot of times you have to be vocal. Like if something is bothering you with your friend, talk to your friend and let them know, hey, this is how I'm feeling. This is how I'm feeling about this certain situation. Get an understanding because a lot of times people lack communication and then they thinking something else instead of just communicating it out. And then they get to, you know what I'm saying, talk behind your back when it ain't really that. And it's just fake. Like. I just feel like you need friends that are understanding of you. You need friends that really support you. You need friends that pray for you. You need friends that uplift you. That somebody that you can be yourself around. Don't try to pressure yourself to be friends with somebody just because you feel lonely. Because it ain't going to be genuine. Wait for God to bless you with some real genuine friends. And you have to be that friend in order to have a good friend. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't going to lie. Like, honestly and truly, I struggle sometimes being a friend because I'm not always able to talk and communicate and be there all the time and i do understand that with me and that are that, are, that those are some things that i really truly need to work on but at the end of the day i know that i am genuine with my friends i know that i genuinely support my friends even when i can't be there sometimes like i don't know you just don't know when a friend is fake or jealous like you just don't know and if you feel that vibe either talk to them about it let them know and if they change that that's good but if they don't cut them off and pray for god to act bless you with some uh more friends how to move on from a relationship so how to move on from a relationship everybody moves on from relationships differently and i, I ain't gonna lie sometimes it could be hard to move on from a relationship especially if you really 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 like the person but honestly and truly, if you're really trying to move on, first off, you have to delete everything of them out your phone. Like, so that you're not reminded of them every single day. And you're not looking at them, reminiscing like, damn, like, this person really did me wrong. And let me tell you this, it's a reason why y'all didn't work out. You know what I'm saying? Everything happens for a reason. If y'all are meant to be with each other, I promise you, it's going to come back. And y'all are going to be with each other if it's really meant to be. Now, to move on like i say pray about it you know what i'm saying if you're spiritual just pray and ask god god help me move on go find things that you like to do go work out you know what i'm saying go go find a hobby go go to work get another job like keep yourself busy that way you're not thinking about them all the time you know what i'm saying and just tell yourself okay i keep working on a page every single day now i'm going to not work on a page tomorrow and i'm gonna take it day by day to where i'm never on a page you know what i'm saying like 
you just gotta have self-discipline and just do stuff to make you busy and I don't know get cute and go out and do, do you like for real like I'm telling you when you know that you that girl you can really go out get cute and get you somebody else and let me tell you this I ain't gonna even tell y'all that hold on I'm not gonna say that I, hold on hold on when you get out of a relationship and you're really trying to move on, do not hop into something else because all that's going to do is just hurt you. You're going to be thinking about that person when you're with that next person and it's not going to be genuine. Like, why are you wasting your time? You know what I'm saying? Heal. Do things for you. You know what I'm saying? Understand who you really are. Get to know who you really are. You know, do things. And eventually, once you heal, then you can move on. But don't try to hop from relationship to relationship or relationship just to move on because that's doing nothing but hurting you. Do you think a woman can love a partner if she does not love herself? Now, baby, I feel like that is a good damn question. And I feel like everybody's going to probably be like, no, a woman can't love nobody if she don't love herself. But let me tell you this. And honestly and truly, bro, like I was just thinking about this question yesterday and how I'm like really going to talk about this. But, um... I really just it really just first off it just depends on how do you define her not loving herself you know because and I just hope I make sense when I'm saying this but it really just depends on what you define as her not loving herself is it because somebody for example I can say I want to go get my teeth done or I want to go get my body done and somebody can see that as Destiny, you don't love yourself because you want to go change something about you. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, I don't think that's not loving myself just because I want to change certain things about me that I feel like I want to be better. You know, like, I really feel like it just depends on how do you define a person not loving themselves? Like, do they think they ugly? Do they want to change something about themselves? Like, you know what I'm saying? Because everybody viewed somebody not loving themselves for every different reason. And for one, I honestly do feel like I don't think not loving yourself necessarily affects the way you love. But I do feel like it affects the way you receive love. Because if you don't love yourself, for example, if you think you're not that girl, if you think you ugly, or if you think whatever the case may be, your partner can, can say you're beautiful, you're this and you're that. And you ain't going to believe your partner because you don't believe it for yourself. So I feel like it does affect the way you receive love because you're not going to ever feel anything that your partner is telling you because you don't feel that for yourself. But I do definitely feel like you can still love someone even if you don't fully love yourself, if that makes sense. Now, will the relationship be um, healthy if you don't love yourself? No, because y'all going to constantly clash heads. Y'all going to constantly get into it because that person just don't love themselves. But I don't think that that takes away that that person can't love you just because they don't love themselves. I hope that makes sense. I really do. Holding down a guy in jail to prove yourself to him. Now, babes, if my partner was in jail, I would definitely hold it down. I definitely would, depending on who that partner is to me, I definitely would hold it down. But if you're trying to hold it down to prove yourself to him, the proving yourself part is what's getting me because you shouldn't have to prove to a nigga nothing. You know what I'm saying? Because when that nigga got out of jail, nine times to ten, he probably gonna go do him anyway. So I don't think you gotta hold nobody down to prove nothing to nobody. I don't think you should have to prove yourself to nobody. But it really just depends on the relationship that y'all have. Like if it's like a serious, deep relationship and he done got incarcerated and y'all on an understanding like hey i'm gonna be out soon hold me down like if you, it depends on the relationship that y'all have like at the end of the day because if it if i just met somebody and they get locked up and our connection really not that deep i'm not gonna hold it down especially if you're gonna be locked up for a long time when you get out let's talk about it but for right now no and but if we got like a deep relationship and you like my you my person we locked in for ill and something happens to you best believe i'm i'm loyal already so i'm gonna hold it down so it really just depends on the person but to have to prove yourself to somebody i just don't feel like it's worth it boo. like i just don't feel like it's really 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 worth it but like i say 
it really just depends on the relationship that y'all have. Um, what has been the biggest life transformation since high school? You're still super young. So the biggest transformation for me has been, I would say starting a business, honestly and truly. Make sure y'all shop in my boutique, 260boutique.com. Make sure y'all shop in all the sexy pieces. And that's, that's that on that. But I feel like the biggest transformation for me was starting my business and just being a full entrepreneur now. Like I've always dreamed of being an entrepreneur. I'm, a, I'm a, in a, a family of entrepreneurs. My dad is an entrepreneur himself. And I don't know, I've always dreamed of being an entrepreneur. So now that I'm in full effect of having my own store and selling clothes and doing photography and stuff like that, like I feel like that's one of my biggest transformations, just being my own boss and growing more and more and more into a boss and learning everything about the business world. So I feel like so far that is my biggest transformation um, since I've graduated high school some years ago. That is all of my questions that I have today. If you want more content like this, please, please, please leave it down below. Give me a like, give me a comment, and make sure you subscribe. Turn on that post notification bell. That way you are alarmed every time I post the video. I hope you guys have an amazing, amazing week. And don't forget the storm does not last always. I love you guys so, so much, and I'm out. Bye. It's going crazy.